Hello, Pastor Rusty and Pastor Lisa and everybody there at the Rock Family Worship Center. This is Evangelist Johnny Jernigan. I'm so excited to get to share in this First Fruits uh, uh, prayer time and devotional time with you all as we're beginning 2023. Can you believe it was 22 years ago almost when 9-11 happened? Boy, that really puts it in perspective, doesn't it? That time is moving really fast. So as I was praying for you, I was just saying, Lord, what would be the first thing in the first of this year that you would want me to share with the Rock Family Worship Center. And the Lord said this, he said, first things first. Can you say that with me? First things first. Can you say it one more time? First things first. And I, and I went to John chapter one and verse 35. I want to, if you want to look in your Bible or if you want to get in your, your device there and you can go with me very quickly to John chapter one, verses 35. I want to read something to you of what God did and the first thing that happened to a young man who knew who Jesus was. Listen to what it says. It says, the next day John was there again with two of his disciples. And when he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God uh, who takes away the sins of the world. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following him and, and asked, what do you want? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said, come and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent the day with him, and it was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said, who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did. Can you say that with me? The first thing Andrew did. Can you say it one more time? The first thing Andrew did was, he, was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which is translated means Peter. You know, as, as we're beginning this new year, I was just praying for you and just saying, Lord, what is the first thing that you want from us as we begin 2023? And he wants us to know his heart. He wants us to know his love. He wants us to know his plan for our life. But I also believe that there's something in this passage that he wants to impart to the Rock Family Worship Center. There are many great teachers who are giving these devotions and pastors to you each day. But I'm an evangelist. I'm a pure evangelist. I ache to win souls. And so I, I want to give you an evangelistic challenge and saying, God, in the first of this year, what's the first thing that we can do? And I want you to think of what happened in this passage that we just read, that the Bible says this. It says that Jesus was coming through and John said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And Andrew was close enough. He heard him say it. So he starts following Jesus and he's kind of creeping behind him. And then Jesus turns around and sees him and says, hey, what are you doing? They said, where are you staying? He said, come with me and I'll show you. And they went and spent the, the afternoon with Jesus. Can you even imagine that? And so the next day, John again says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You can read this in John chapter 1. And the Bible says this, the first thing Andrew did was he went and found his brother Simon and he brought him to Jesus. Now, Simon, we know as that great apostle, Peter, the apostle Peter, who was that sword slinging, water walking, bold disciple of Christ who preached the first gospel message and 3,000 people got saved. And we all know who the apostle Peter is. But can I tell you, most people don't even know who Andrew was in the Bible. He's only mentioned three times in the New Testament. And all three times he was going and getting someone and bringing them to Jesus. And I want you to think about this. If Andrew had not gone and gotten his brother Simon and brought him to Jesus, we might not have ever known who the Apostle Peter was. The first thing he did. And, and in the original text, John Gill, who I love his notes on this, and you can find those if you want to look them up. Uh, the great Bible teacher, John Gill, in his exposition of John chapter one, he said that in the original language, it's almost like a child on Christmas. How do children act on Christmas? Do they sleep late? No, they get up early in the morning. Is it Christmas yet? Is it Christmas yet? Can we open our presents? Can we go open our presents? Then it was probably with that level of excitement that Andrew had, that he went and got Simon and said, I found the Messiah. I found the Messiah. This is the guy. This is the one we've been waiting for. Come with me. We've got to go and see him. If he had gone depressed, would Simon have wanted to go with him? If he had gone very uh, uh, indifferent, would Simon have wanted to go with him? Probably not. But it was probably with that level of excitement and enthusiasm, like a child on Christmas morning, that he went and get his brother and he brings him and says, you got to come with me. you got to come with me. This is the Messiah. This is the one that we've been waiting for. This is the one we've been believing for. And you know what? I want to give you this challenge as we begin this new year, as we are saying, God, what will 2023 unfold for us? What will we do at the Rock Family Worship Center? What will we do for your great name as a believer? And God, what will I do? What will you do? 
to go and get people and bring them to Jesus. Because I want you to know, I can't save anybody. You can't save anybody. It's not our job to save anybody. But it is our job to tell them, and it is our job to invite them, and it is our job to bring them. Do you know if we could just get people to the Rock Family Worship Center, and they sit under that worship, and they sit under that teaching, the Holy Spirit will begin to do His work in their heart, and they'll be saved and healed and delivered and set free. But I believe it's all predicated on getting people to the house, going and finding our brother. And people have said this many, many times, am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is emphatically 100%, yes, we are. Huntsville, Madison, Fayetteville, Double Springs are all your brother. You are there. They are a part of your life. You are your brother's keeper and they need to be connected to you. So I believe when we stand before God, we're not going to be just judged for what we did in this life. I believe we're going to be judged for what we didn't do. That it's in our capacity to go help somebody and we don't help them. I believe we're going to answer to God for that. And it's in your capacity and it's in my capacity that we can go and we can help other people know who Jesus is and what Jesus can do in their life. And I want to just give you this thought. Your face telegraphs your attitudes about yourself, about your life, and about others. And I want you to know your countenance creates a climate that attracts people to you or causes people to pull away from you. Why so downcast on my soul? I'm going to ask you to smile right now. I'm going to ask you to say, Lord, let my face show that I know who Jesus is and that people will look at me and say, what is different about you? Why are you so happy in an unhappy world? And we can say, because I know who he is. I believe that day Andrew knew who Jesus was and he went and found his brother and said, this is the Messiah. This is the guy. This is the one that we've been looking for. Come and go with me so that we can be with him. And I believe that Jesus that day I want you to know he renamed him, he reframed him, that he is no longer Simon, now he is Peter. And that word Peter comes from the word Petros, which means rock. That Jesus said in Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20, he said, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. What would the gates of hell not prevail against? The fact that Peter knew who Jesus was. Andrew knew who Jesus was. And on that day, Andrew was so excited, he went and got his brother and he brought him to Jesus. Can we pray right now? Can you just lift up your head? Don't let your face look down. Let your face look up and say, God, this year, I'm going to go get them and bring them to Jesus. And if we can get them in the building, if we can tell them, God can set them free. Can you pray with me right now? Father, in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, I pray for the Rock Family Worship Center that 2023 will be the greatest soul-winning season of the history of this church under the leadership of Pastor Rusty and Lisa. And in the days ahead, God, that there are miracles in front of this church. And every person who's watching this right now, God, would you just anoint them? Would your power come over this video right now? And would you let them know, oh God, that you want to empower them this year to go and find others and bring them to Jesus and you you will set them free. You will rename them. You will reframe them and you will change their life forever. Do it, oh God, as we begin this year, that 2023, that I'll get first things first. The first thing I'll do is I'll go get them and bring them to Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. I want to challenge you. I want to beg you. Ask God now, who can I go get? Who can I go bring? And bring them to Jesus. And let's believe we're all going to share together in watching God transform lives this year. I love you all and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.